John Humbred up next. John Humbred, that's the red and black Zenith 701. UL powered. UL powered. And John that, Humbred, a bit of a showman, you may notice. UL Power has had a booth number five here at Paradise City. Oh, that was Whoa. good. Whoa! That's something else, isn't it? Hey, guys. I'm back. I'm about ready to really set in on my 500 hour maintenance. I've heard some people say they're scared to go into an engine, you know, even to do the, the things like adjust valves. And I just want to show you guys how how simple it really is. There's not much to it. Uh, if you can if you can turn a couple of wrenches and an Allen wrench or two, you, you can adjust valves. It's really not a big deal, especially on the UL Power. They've done a good job designing this. It's a simple. It's easy to get to everything. Um, anyway, adjusting valves and changing oil. So let's get to it. All right, so here we are here. I've got the valve covers. This is a 350 IS engine. Hopefully you can see everything good here. The valve covers, they use a, what's called a Nordlock washer. Uh, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's a really neat little locking mechanism. Don't see any issue with safety wire them if you'd rather do it that way, but I prefer to just use the Nordlocks because I've had, had good success with them. What I'm doing here is taking the valve covers off. Uh, there are four valve covers, four cylinder on the 350 IS engine. The 350 series all have four cylinders, so four valve covers. Um, all you need to do this is a set of common metric Allen wrenches. And each valve cover has three small Allen headed bolts. There are two Nordlock two sides to the Nordlock washer, so there'll be two pieces of it. Uh, something I should mention, it'll drip a few drops of oil, so I have something, some, something to catch the oil there underneath. It's not, usually not much. I'll try to get where you can actually see it here, but it'll just be a little bit that hangs there in the valve cover. We're talking maybe, maybe a teaspoon. It's not much. There's the inside of the valve cover, and what you've got here is the rocker arms, the adjustment screws, uh, the valves are underneath the rocker arms there, so it's all a really robust and simple system. UL Power uses a mechanical flat tap at Kim. It's what, what's been used in the racing industry for years, and, and they, they use it today. You know, they're building brand new engines with this same valve set up today, and even though it's been around for decades, they're using it today because it works. It just, it works and it works really well. And a lot of the engines that see the, the heavy percent power usage, a, a lot of them today are using the push rod engines with, with these mechanical valve setups, uh, the mechanical cam, mechanical lifters and all that. Here comes the other one. Like I say, there'll be about a teaspoon of oil that'll drip out right there. All right, so other than that, you need another little different size of Allen wrench. I don't have the sizes. I think this one's a five, another one may be a three to get the valve covers off. And then it takes a 13 millimeter wrench. And you need a set of filler gauges. I'm shooting for six thousandths. I wrote down the firing order because I just, I never can remember. We have so many different engines that we, we set valves on. So firing order on the 350 IS engine is cylinders one, three, two, four. So what you're looking for here, as you get ready to do this, you, you have to index it. Have to figure out where it is and uh, what you're really looking for is the valves to be overlapping when you set them. Okay, I hope you can see this in the camera. But I've turned, as I turn the prop back and forth here, you can see these both valves are moving at the same time. And they're beginning to overlap. So you find somewhere about where the center of the overlap is and stop there. That means this one's, the two valves are overlapping. 
This is cylinder number two. So what you want is the cylinder in the firing order that's opposite of two, which when this engine, it would be one. All right, so now that I've shown you what, what it's like to overlap, I've got it set to where it's overlapping on the first cylinder on the other side. The other side, so the firing order or the cylinders on the UL power, it starts one on the right side, two on the left, three is on the right side, the next one back, and then four is back here. Um, so it starts, it, it, it goes side to side on the engine. It's one, two, three, four. If it was, had six cylinder, it'd be five and six as you work your way back. So anyway, I've got the, the first cylinder is overlapping like I showed you right here with these just a minute ago. So these should be just barely loose. They should be both of them, both valves should be completely closed and the lifters off of them. What I'm looking for here is six thousandths of clearance with a filler gauge. What you'll do is put it underneath the rocker arm and it should slide right in there on top of the top of the valve and that actually feels pretty good i may not have to adjust that much um, yeah seven thousandths is going to be tight so i'm going to snug it up just barely so you can see but it's it's really that's that's pretty good i wouldn't hesitate to say that engine would be just fine to run it the way it is. But like I said, I'm a little bit of a perfectionist too, so I wanna get it just exactly right. So what you'll do here, I've got the Allen wrench inside the inner part of this stud, the 13 millimeter wrench on the nut. I'll turn both of them at the same time to break it loose. And then hold the 13 millimeter wrench and tighten the Allen wrench just ever so barely and then tighten them both back up together. And what that'll do is that'll adjust the tension that you get right here with the filler gauge. So I'll get my six back out. And this is some trial and error on how much it actually takes to make it work. I'm not sure I moved that enough to, to even change it yet. So I'm gonna do it again here. Loosen them up together, tighten the Allen just barely and then tighten them back up together. And there, I believe that's going to be it. It needs to, you need to be able to feel just a little bit of drag. It doesn't need to be tight enough that you have to really force the filler gauge in, but it needs to be just a little bit of drag. And it, it does take some some getting used to for what that feels like. But it's, it's like I said, it's really simple. This this whole process is just really not bad at all. So I'm losing that one up just a little bit and tighten it just a hair also. It's been a hundred hours since I've changed the oil in this thing or checked the valves. Both sides of that are in really good shape. So I am going to make sure they're snug. And they are. I'll check it one more time here. It's got just the right amount of drag left. And that's it. That's all there is to that one. I'm done with it. Uh, if you want to get real particular, you can turn it through a cycle. And lots of times I'll do, I'll, I'll, I'll check them as I go around the next round just to be sure that there's not something, got it kicked sideways or something like that. If you turn it a full round, it'll be a part of a round on the camshaft also, and all this will be a fresh start to check it. I'm going to turn it again so we can check the valves on cylinder number four. Four is opposite of number three, so I will have to go to the other side and get the valves overlapping on number three and come back and I can check the valves here on four. Okay, I've got three is overlapping. So it should be good to check number four. I've got my six thousandths filler gauge. Put it in there, it is just ever so barely loose. I'll uh, see, I've got my seven right there and it's tight. It's been this way every time. It's, it just doesn't, does not move much. I've been really quite proud of it. You'll see just a little bit of movement when you first break in the engine, which is normal because things are getting seated together and uh, worn in, broke in. Everything's getting broke in together just right. And we have that one. Nope, that's actually just about right. I feel just a little bit drag. That one's a hair too tight. Yep, there we go. Just a little bit.
bit of drag, not much. That one actually has just a little bit of drag. I, I would say it's probably less than half a thousandths off, really. Loosen them both up just a hair, tighten it back up together. And I've got some drag there. So guys, you've seen it there. That's that's all there is to adjusting the valves on a UL power engine. It's that simple. You take three bolts out of each valve cover. Uh, it uses an O-ring gasket, so there's nothing there to, to have to tear up or replace or anything like that. All you need to do is make sure that the O-ring is in the groove before you put the valve cover back on. And that's it. We've just changed, we've just adjusted, just check the valves on the UL power engine and it's Again, it's just as simple as you can get. I really, really kind of like being able to do that because you can, you can look inside, you can see what kind of buildups might be beginning to form there. You can see some of the health of the engine. It's all getting kind of dark, which it's, it's got a hundred hours on it, so it's time for an oil change. I will put the valve covers back on it and run it one time and get the oil good and good and warm, and then I'll change the oil. Everything looks really good. All right, so like I said, I like to go back and look at the other side. I like to check them twice. I like to run through twice. After I get adjusted, I like to run all the way back through and make sure everything looks good. Um, just got through finishing the other side and I'm happy to report those were all, one of them didn't need adjusted at all. The other three were by far less than half a thousandths. So I'm very, very pleased. And those two are, that one may be just a hair tight. Let's see. Yeah, that one's just a little bit tight. I'm actually going to adjust it barely more. Grab my wrench here real quick. I'll loosen it up just a little. And again, what I'm doing there, I'm loosening both these together. Uh, if your filler gauge is loose, you'll need to tighten the Allen wrench up some and then tighten them back up together. If your filler gauge is tight, once you loosen both, you'll need to loosen the Allen wrench a little bit and then tighten them back up together. So you're, you're loosening and tightening that clearance right there is what you're doing. And I just loosened it a hair right there. And it's easy to, to change it a lot. I you think you're not moving it much, but it, I hope you, hope you could see I didn't move it much there and it's just a little bit too much. So it just takes a little tiny bits at a time to sometimes make a significant difference. Uh, when you're looking at half thousandths, it's, it doesn't take much to make a difference in how it feels. So even the guys are experienced, you know, you can get close, but even the guys that have a lot of experience, if you're, if they're a perfectionist and they're really wanting to get it right on it and get the feel of what it feels like the drag right, you know, they, they may take three or four times per, per valve getting it set just right. And this, this one's there. I'm pleased with that. Opposite of number four is number three. So I'll go to the other side. I'll get this same cylinder on the opposite side. The valve's overlapping so I can check this one one final time. All right, I've got them overlapping on this side. So it should be good to check number four next. I hope I've explained this easy enough. You may have to watch it a time or two. You know, if or leave me a comment. I don't mind answering questions. That one's pretty well exactly how I want it to be on the feel, and that one is too. I feel just a slight bit of drag pushing it between the two. And that's it. I'm ready to put the valve covers back on this side. So when you put this back together, you need to make sure that both sides of the Nordlock washer's on it. So it'll be two pieces. Uh, if they come completely apart, you need to look up and be sure that the two sides are mating that are supposed to. Be sure that the O-ring is still inside the groove all the way around. Get your three bolts started in there and just kind of finger snug. All right, here we go. 
once you get that done, you'll need to snug them up. So we're gonna sequence together. Don't, don't just go full tight on one, or at least I don't like to. I like for things to be kind of in a sequence. I'll tighten them all up, snug my hand this way, and then I'll torque all of them. You know, I'm kind of anxious to go through the rest of my inspection. I'm at my 500 hour inspection here, so I'm just briefly looking. I don't see anything that stands out, but I, I need to go through this thing good. Uh, I will be changing the oil and the filters and inspecting hoses and linkages and uh, framework, the engine mount, the rubber dampers and all that kind of stuff, bearings, bushings. I'll be checking cables for slack. I'll be checking everything I can possibly can for it. You guys know it's, it's kind of a baby. I really enjoy this airplane, so I want it to be, I want to take care of it. I want it to take care of me, so for that to happen, I need to take care of it. And I try to. Uh, you guys know I, I really do use it, and it's amazing what all it can take uh, whatever I dish at it, it seems to handle just extremely well. Uh, I've gone through, I mean, even looking at things where I've painted it, the, the rivets here were, you know, I think there was some concern, at least from me and maybe a few other people, that the 130 horsepower would be kind of rough on the rivets here where everything con connects and joins. But I mean, guys, I've painted over this, over the rivets, and you can't even see any marks where the rivets have tried to move. It, the paint hasn't even cracked between the two surfaces. So it's, I really feel like this is just a, a uh, essentially, I think this is a, a perfect combination. The, the 350 IS and the 701, it makes for a really fun, lightweight, and just get in it and go combination. Anyway, I hope this helps. I hope you guys aren't afraid to check your own valves because it's really not that bad. There are lots of videos. You know, on YouTube, you can go look up and see how to do it. Or, again, don't hesitate to leave me a comment or I'll try to walk you through more if you need it, but it's it's not that bad. So, um, John Humbert, Super 701. See you guys on the next one.